Hey guys, uh, Scott here again with a new beer, beer dissection video. Um, what we're gonna do today is do a classic beer here on Long Island. Um, it's been around for, I don't know how many years, Blue Point Brewery, but Blue Point Toasted Lager. Okay, not unfamiliar to most people that live here on Long Island. Um, Blue Point Brewery, quick thing on Blue Point Brewery, as far as I know the history, uh, they were a smaller brewery, craft brewery on, uh, south side of montauk highway here on uh long island on uh in patchogue uh, i think they were bought out by uh ab and bev several years ago uh they moved to the old briar cliff, cliff college uh i've reviewed at least one of their beers um if not two on the channel here um nice tap room now bigger brewery uh they brew a lot in different styles this one in particular the toasted lager i think was probably one of their earlier beers um it's weird because i definitely have had this before uh but it's been so long ago it's like one of those things like if you live near the beach and you know you take it for granted you kind of go to the you know you're like i can always go to the beach or i can always go wherever you know this one's always on the shelf at my local beer store you can get it pretty much at any store uh that sells beer here on long island they call it toasted lager um based upon their website that <coughs> they had an old fire drawn kettle i guess or or burner that uh, gave some toasted characteristics probably to some of the earlier beers. Um, this one's about five and a half percent. I believe I read it's about roughly 28 IBUs um, for bitterness, international bitterness units. Um, but again, Blue Point Toasted Lager, um, it's probably now, it probably has distribution now all over the country since uh, Budweiser took it over. Um, so other than that, um, that's the only specs I know on the beer and let's crack this thing open. I'm still using my kind of tulip pint with something like this, this lager, you know, again, drink out anything you want to drink it out of, whether it's a Dixie cup, a, a styrofoam cup, doesn't matter. Um, <coughs> I usually prefer these tulips. Um, if you've watched more than one video of mine, you know, you've seen the familiar glasses that I have, um, you know, just to get the, the hop aroma and, and other uh, aromatics uh, from the beer is a little bit easier, even more than the flavor. But whatever you have, Willie Becker glass, Nonic pint, you know, Tula pint, even a shaker pint, if you would go be fine for, for a style like this. All right, so again, Blue Point toasted lager. Again, a classic that's been around for a very long time. And like I said, I've had it before. It's been, it's gotta be at least several years that I've had it. Um, you know, so again, this is kind of almost, you know, one of those beers that you maybe I take it, you know, take it for granted too much, but let's get this thing uh, opened. All right. Well, that's pouring very nicely. Nice. Uh, I'll get it up here on camera here in just a second. Wow. So we got like a nice deep gold color would make sense if it was a toasted lager um this beer has won a few gold medals in some of the uh beer awards over the years um you can probably check out their website if you're interested um a deep gold nice big frothy white to light beige uh head at least on camera may show a little differently than what i'm looking at um but very pretty beer perfectly clear um you know most of these places are either filtering it or They've got the, the the fermentation control to kind of cold crash in um, the bright tanks and stuff like that. So let's take a whiff of this. Okay. So you definitely get that back to that more spicy herbal floral uh, aroma from the hops. I didn't get a, a breakdown of what hops they use. I don't even know if it's, it's really published, but it, it kind of gives me that kind of that German noble hop type of aroma. Definitely, you definitely get a toast kind of uh, malt profile smell too. Maybe a light um, graham cracker, biscuit, um, you know, lightly toasted biscuits. So you, I guess I can see why they call it toasted lager. Um, not really, it doesn't get as deep as caramel or nuts or things like that. Um, but the aroma, definitely spicy herbal, 
you know, you, you think of like, again, like a lot of your German noble hops, um, you maybe even some English, some of the earthy aromas that you get from this. But definitely looks good and, and smells very good. I, again, I, this is kind of like almost, almost opening a new beer for me today. Uh, cheers. Again, let me start with the malt. It's definitely that bread crust, toasty um, type of malt. Definitely a lot more dense than just strictly like a, a, a lightly kiln two-row. This is kind of, <coughs> maybe even has some crystal malt in it. Um, not, you know, nice carbonation, medium carbonation, um, kind of that medium kind of mouth feel. Uh, but it kind of, in the aftertaste, is very crisp and clean. <coughs> None of that residual filmy taste it's uh, you get on some of these beers um it's actually quite crisp i mean i'm you know pleasantly surprised here um enough enough depth of in the malt with the caramel crystal malt probably they're using more than like a international pale lager definitely has a lot more substance to it than that um but he's definitely get that toast um bread crust breadcrumb type of um, malt profile. Still that herbal, <coughs> floral, German noble-like hops. I don't know if they're using German noble hops, but it, you know, it's kind of like that type of um, floral, herbal, a little earthy, maybe even some a, a thrown in a little bit of English type of hops, like a East Kent Col Goldings or something like that. Um, no astringency. You know, on the aftertaste, again, you get that bread crust, graham cracker type of uh, <coughs> lightly kilned kind of malt, like kilned enough to add a little bit of depth to the malt, but not enough to really kind of overpower it. Like we're starting to get into uh, Munich Dunkel territory or, or Munich malt or Vienna malt. Which again, they may use that with, you know, based on the color, maybe there's a little Vienna in there, but I don't, if you're really interested in there, you may have to do a little researching on the internet on a specific malt um, profile. And I don't think they have it on the can. And this one, we're looking at it, best buy date, May 20, May of 2023. So again, I'm here on Long Island. So this is just down the road. I like to think that this is uh, extremely fresh. It's probably about less than 10 miles away from me if it's being brewed and packaged and and distributed right here locally so let me just uh pour a little bit more here but the color is beautiful i'm actually gonna probably go to this beer a lot more often i you know it's so easily it's usually at a, a very nice price point here um very easily to get and it's just very easy drinking but Um, but again, very crisp, lager-like, you know, lager profile, bottom fermenting, clean, crisp. Um, I could see this being used in food pairings pretty much for anything that you want, a lot of barbecue. It's got enough bitterness. Um, I would say that bitterness is moderate. Um, you know, I think I said it was 28. I think I had looked 28. So, you know, that's kind of a moderate kind of level bitterness, uh, kind of sitting in your German Pilsner territory, maybe just below that. Um, so it can cut through some, you know, mildly fatty dishes, um, but your barbecues, hamburgers, pizzas. That's why I can see this being a kind of an all purpose beer for, for most dishes. And, you know, so I, I would not hesitate, you know, you pick up a 12 pack, six pack, drink this a lot more. Um, regularly um so again guys i would rank this listen in the world of beers comparing it across all profiles i mean i wouldn't go out of my way but it's definitely in the realm of, of nice like a, a lager medium grade um a good b i mean this is a solid b maybe even b plus if, if i was uh um 
basing it on like highly drinkable, quaffable type of lagers. Um, I'm definitely going to be probably purchasing it a lot more often, especially keeping it. You can see this hitting a market of a lot of different people out there that enjoy crisp, clean, simple drinking lager beers that has enough flavor in the, in the hops and the malt to make it a little more interesting than your tip, your international pale lagers, your American light lagers. So guys, if I would say if you wanted to branch a little bit into craft, I don't know if they're technically considered craft anymore. I mean, but trust, trust me, uh, Blue Point's been around for a while here on Long Island and I don't know if they use the same brewers. They're still brewing a lot of other styles of beer that are very good. Um, and I would not hesitate to get this more often. I am actually surprised I haven't had this in quite a while. So again, Blue Point toasted lager, definitely something if you're here on Long Island, you can get this very easily. I'm sure they're getting distribution elsewhere. Um, a good everyday beer, I, I, I think it is, okay? All right, guys, until next time, um, have a great one. I'm filming this around the holidays. Happy holidays and happy new year.